everyone. Good evening. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm so excited because I have Shannon Brooks here with me this evening, and we're going to be discussing life insurance and building generational wealth. So, hey, Shannon, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. Hope you are. I am. We're so glad to have you here. I'm going to give a quick introduction before we get into it. At the end, we will leave time for questions so you can just drop any questions that you may have in the chat and I'll try to catch them on um, the Facebook stream and LinkedIn. So tonight I have Shannon Brooks with me. Shannon is a wife, mother, and business owner. The name of her company is Brooks and Associates. She is a financial consultant and an independent life and healthcare benefits agent. Shannon has been in the financial and industry insurance industry for over 17 years. She assists her clientele with their financial goals, insurance needs that are affordable and realistic, as well as credit education. Shannon is committed to making sure that her clients have the necessities needed to live a comfortable financial lifestyle and that they have the ability to create generational wealth. Shannon, thank you for coming on. I'm so excited to talk to you this evening. Before we get into it, I have a question I like to ask every guest at the beginning of um, the spark session and that's if you could choose any light source to describe yourself what light would you select oh my oh let's see you know what i think i would um be the sun okay the burning sun because i want to be the burning sun because i'm out here to set this whole world on fire i love that mm -hmm. yes Awesome, awesome, awesome. So Shannon, before we get into kind of our more specific questions, can you tell us a little bit about Brooks and Associates and what it is that you do? Okay. Brooks and Associates, that's my company. It's been in existence since 2005. And what I do is I help people in three different areas. Um, one is finance. And in that area, what I do is I help people to come up with uh, realistic and obtainable savings goals, okay. budget goals. And from there, we turn those goals into actual plans. And I also help people with tracking their spending so they know exactly where their money is going and they know exactly how much they can spend and how much they can save. I'm also a life and health insurance agent, but I mainly focus in on life insurance because everybody that knows me knows what I always say, GoFundMe is not life insurance. So I always tell people, we're going to leave all that foolishness over there in uh, 2021. And what I do is I help people to understand that life insurance is affordable, it's obtainable, and it's high time that we start being financial legacies and not burdens. And we are going to stop living the dream and dying a nightmare. That's what I do on, the, on that side. And on the credit side, I help people to understand their credit, understand how to read their credit report, and also to realize that not all credit is good credit. So just because you get that credit offer in the mail does not mean you, meet, does not mean you need to take it. <laughs> because the big print giveth, the little print taketh away. And I'm always here to show people what's in that little print. And that little print is pretty much basically there to hurt you and not help you. Okay. And so that's what I do with Brooks and Associates. Awesome. Thank you. So mm -hmm. let's just get into it. One of the things that people always say is, oh, I don't really have life and I don't really need life insurance or I've got time to purchase life insurance. How would you respond to the question of, do I really need life insurance? I think me and sometimes my mouth can get the best of me. I'm always one, if you ask that, I'm like, do you need air to breathe? So yes, it's obvious to me, everybody needs it because the thing is nowadays, a funeral, average funeral probably is going to go anywhere from 10 to 15,000. Let's just be honest, who has ten to $15,000 just sitting around somewhere just saying, hey, look, when I pass away, go get that shoebox that has that 15000 and then go ahead and drop it on over there to funeral right. home. Nobody that I know of. <laughs> That's a lot of money to come up with. Exactly. So I always tell people, so yeah, if you need air to breathe, yes, well, then you need life insurance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So clearly, of course, you need it because life insurance it can also help build generational wealth and mm -hmm. help take care mm -hmm. of afterlife expenses. Let's talk a little bit about what are the different types of life insurance policies or coverage that are available. And then I guess in that same breath, as you tell us about those, what would be the difference between term and permanent life insurance? Okay. There's a variety of uh, policies out there. The ones that I offer are term, whole life, and also universal life. Okay. 
um, term is the one that is the the less expensive one. Okay. The least expensive, I should say. And it's the least expensive because eventually it's going to terminate. That's why when you hear term, I always tell people, when you hear term, just know it's going to terminate somewhere. Normally you can get a 10, 20, 25, 30 year. And depending upon your age nowadays, you can also get up to 40 years okay. of coverage. But just know eventually it's going to turn. Okay. Um, whole life is going to be more expensive. It's more expensive because it will take you through your entire life. It does not have an expiration date. And it also builds cash value. I always tell people there's always a but, but <laughs> your whole life, that cash value is not yours. That's, I think, one of the things that we think that, oh, it's building cash value. It's mine. I say, anytime somebody tells you you can borrow against if it's yours, why do you have to borrow it? So the thing is, is that, no, it's not yours. It's the company's. They're letting you borrow the interest that they make off of these okay. policies, off the money that they you know pull in or what have you. So if you go to borrow against it, whatever that cash value amount is, just know you got to pay it back. And if you don't pay it back, they will take it away from the face amount when you do pass away. And if you don't ever borrow anything against it, it still doesn't matter. The company's going to take all that back and they're just okay. going to give the beneficiary the face amount. Okay. So that's whole life. Universal, I always tell people, universal can remind you of whole life and maybe a little bit of term on steroids. So what that is, is that you can get the best of both worlds with that. You can, you know, get a policy and it may, you may have it up until the age of 95 or 110. A lot of people think, oh, that's old. But nowadays people live way longer than they used to. And then it also builds cash value, but it builds it a little bit more rapidly. And then it's dependent upon what kind of policy you can get into, some policies allow you to add on additional monies into that cash value component. Okay. So you can, if you get like a refund, a tax refund or something, you say, hey, I've got $2,000. I want to invest it somewhere where you can invest it into a UL product compared okay. to putting it into a savings account that's not going to really give you a whole lot of interest. Okay. I want to follow up on a few things. So I want to come back to term, the term is life insurance. And you said that eventually it will terminate. And it's only for a limited amount of term. So what does that mean? Okay. So that means, let's say, okay, I'll put myself out there on front street. I'm 45. Okay. So if I were to go out and I get a, a term policy that's for 30 years. So what is the days that? The 16th? 16th, yes. Okay. So if I were to get a policy and I got approved and today was my initial draft day. Okay. So the day it goes into effect. I would have coverage all the way up until March 16th of whenever 30 years from now would be 2022, 2052. Yeah, 52. I'm not good at math. So 2052. <laughs> so March 16th, 2052 is how long I would have coverage. So March 17th, I'm pretty much kind of SOL. Okay. So if I pass away outside of that time frame, then at that point, no coverage is in effect. So that means if you pass your term, it's whatever. So yeah. how would you, knowing, like you said, before people are living a little bit longer, how, what would be your recommendations around a term life insurance policy? Is that something you would possibly want to get later on in life? Or is it cheaper the younger that you are? Like, how does that work considering that you would want it to hopefully max meet be term long enough until you die but you know what because if what i'm hearing is if it's after that term then it's you're ineligible for the funding so how does that work well normally <laughs> what I, um, I tell people nowadays i said look into getting what they call a return of premium rider okay. now with that rider because it's a rider it's going to make the policy the, the premium amount go up okay. but you can add that on to a term and what that means is that if you outlive the term you're going to get all your money back at the end of that term. Now, I tell people what I always say, there's a but. But with this, you know, with that rider, there is no interest that is added on to that amount of money. You're going to know exactly how much you're going to get back if okay. you outlive that term. So if you have a, if your monthly premium is $20, you would say 20 times 12, get that number, multiply that times 30 or 25 or 20, and that's going to be the amount that you're going to get back at the end of that term. Okay. So do you highly recommend that? I normally recommend that 
for those who are in that situation where they're like, well, I don't necessarily want to pay all this money to a company and then I outlive it and then three right. days I pass away. You know, <laughs> I mean, because I'm like that. Like I have returned the premium on myself you know, because I'm like, I claim long, you know, longevity. I don't want to be walking around here and I just gave up all this money to all this. The devil is a lie. So, <laughs> right put some you know, return of premium out there on myself, but then I also have just traditional term because the traditional term is going to be a lot less expensive because once again, there's no rider on that. Okay. What I always tell people to do is look at what you can afford. What are you overall trying to accomplish? Term policy is good for those who it, the, pretty much the younger you are, the better your, your monthly premium will be. However, it's also good if you have something going on, if you have a mortgage, if you have car notes, if okay. you have utilities, if you have a business, if you have small children, if you have, you know, a spouse, anything where you see that you have a large amount of debt. Okay. In the event you pass away while this debt is still on the table, okay. at least beneficiary can take that and either pay things off, pay things down, or continue to make the monthly payments on it. So therefore they're not skipping a beat. Okay. That's to me is what I always tell people to look at term for. Okay. All right, cool. Get it like to get it when you're young. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for clearing that, clarifying that. Okay. I have another question, follow up question on the next one, but I'm also trying to keep my take my little notes. Okay. okay. So with whole life, you said it's more expensive and the cash value is not yours. So how does the whole life insurance policy work? I normally, once again, this is just me, and I know agents. Are Every agent I hear is different. I tell people to look at whole life as being a final expense policy. Okay. I tell people to look at stacking policies, meaning get you some term, get you some return of premium term. And if you by chance outlive all of this term, if you have a whole life that's going to continue to go and run concurrent with those other policies, as all these other policies are ending, that whole life will still be in effect. Okay. Use your whole life for your final expense. If you pass away during the time frame where your terms are still on the table, tell your beneficiary or beneficiaries, hey, take this term, take these policies and pay off the debt, do whatever you need to do, whatever you want to do. Take this whole life plan and use this to bury me. Use okay. this as a final expense. And once again, if you outlive all of that term and you pass away three, four, five days later after all that term is terminated or what have you, you still have that whole life that's there that once again can still be used as final expense. I okay. never recommend anybody to get a big old whole life policy because it's very expensive. And I'm not in the business of putting people in debt because I know insurance can be a bill. And the last thing I want anybody doing is making me feel bad or coming to me telling me when <laughs> I, I only went out on a Friday night and went out to eat, went bowling, went to the movies, but now we got to Netflix and chill because we got to pay all these insurance premiums. No, right. you're not paying that off on me. The what? The devil is a lie. Not over here. So that's fine. That's what I say. Whole life, final expense. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. And thank you for clarifying. Okay. The most common are going to be term and whole life. And mm -hmm. then you have with your term, if you want, want to just ensure that you get your money's worth, you're going to put that return of premium rider on mm -hmm. your policy. Is, is that the language that you would use to ask your insurance agent to add that? And is, is it typically a little bit more expensive or is it still within the affordable range? I always tell people a return of premium rider, because like normally, once again, it, you add that on to a term policy. And normally with term, you have to have at least a 20 year or more in order to qualify to get that return to premium. Okay. What I always tell people is that if you have an agent and you interest now, normally what you cannot do nowadays, you cannot go back and amend your policies. Now, okay. some companies you may be able to, most companies, they want you to start over. But by chance, if you're with the company and that company still allows people to come in and amend their policies, you may be able to ask that agent, is it possible for me to get that return of premium rider added on? In the companies I'm with, you can't do that. You have to okay. start all the way over. But I always say, never say never. Some companies may still allow that. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
thank you. All right, so my next question is, you know, we're talking a lot about you know, these different types of policies and this, I'm assuming a lot of this may be based on the assumption that people are healthy. So I guess my next question focuses around, can you get life insurance if you have pre-diagnosed conditions or prior health issues? How does that work? And you get in a policy that you can actually afford. There are policies out here that you can still qualify for. Some companies, some insurance, you know, well, traditional insurance um, companies, some of them do, well, they, they ask the question, the medical questions in a way to where, let's say if somebody has diabetes, mm -hmm. diagnosed 15 years ago, the question may ask, within the last five years, have you been diagnosed with diabetes? You can truthfully say no, because you were diagnosed 15 years ago. And so now that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be approved for it. Mm -hmm. That just means that they are asking the questions in the sense of where it's allowing people to get in the door somewhat that way. But now if for whatever reason a person does not qualify under that particular kind of policy, they do offer what they call guaranteed issue plans. Okay. Now, they are, in my opinion, the most expensive plans out there, but they're mm -hmm. guaranteed issue, meaning that there is no underwriting. So once you click on submit, the person is automatically approved. Is but it a wait period? Now with all policies, it's a two-year contestability okay. period. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so any company, they reserve the right within that first two years to not pay out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what that basically means is that you have to have the policy for two years before they'll make any payment. So if you die or something happens before that two-year period, then you're just... SOL. They actually give you back, they'll okay. get the beneficiary back the monthly premiums. Most companies okay. give back monthly premiums paid into, and sometimes they may add in like a 10% interest on top of that. So they don't, get, the companies are not going to keep all your money. Okay. They'll at least say, okay, we're not going to approve you for the face amount, but we'll at least give the beneficiary the monthly premiums that was paid. To it. Okay. And so the other, with the other two policies, it's still the same rules apply as well with the two-year mm -hmm. period, correct? Yeah, pretty much across the board. Pretty much every company out here has a two-year contestability period. Okay, great. And then they're also going to still have to take, if you're even if you're applying for a term or whole life, you still would have to complete some type of health assessment. As normally, it, or... it depends on how much coverage that you're wanting. Normally, if you want to, normally with term nowadays, most companies, if you stay up under two hundred and fifty thousand. As far as what you're applying for, okay. all you have to do is just answer the questions that, you know, that's on the application. Now, if they see something on your medical report that is going against what you have answered, or they see something on there where they're like, wait a minute, what is this? It doesn't look like there's any conclusion. A doctor didn't come back and clarify anything. Then at that point, they may require physical. But if okay. they do, normally the company will take care of paying for it. You just have to go to whatever facility that's normal. Normally what they'll try to do is get somebody, get some place in your area. Okay. And they'll say, okay, this is like five miles from you. Go here, take the physical, and we'll take care of the rest. We'll take okay. care of the building and all that other stuff. But normally if they don't see anything crazy, they normally don't ask you to do that. Okay, cool. Good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to ask all the questions I would think someone oh, else that I would have. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me because like I said, I think this is a very important topic that you know, we don't talk enough about. Or the, the, so I guess my next question is around pricing and how you can budget to purchase life insurance. So are the deductibles and premiums affordable? And then I guess you've talked about this a little bit, but under what circumstances would you be denied coverage? As far as the premium, what I normally do when I'm working with somebody, I always say, you tell me how much you want to pay monthly. Okay. Because I always tell people, build your own plan. Never let an agent tell you what you need to pay unless they okay. want to pay for it. But they say, hey, I got $100. I'm going to put in your account every single month. I want you to have this coverage. You can say, okay, bet. You, I'll go ahead and apply for whatever's $100 worth of coverage. But other than that, I always say, tell me how much you want to pay monthly. And okay. I'll build based on that. So I've had people say, I can only afford $10. I can afford 50. I can afford a hundred. Whatever you tell me you can afford, that's the amount that we're going to start off with. So that's why I always tell people insurance can be affordable if you know how to ask the right questions and you know how to hold your 
agent accountable for saying, look, I'm not getting ready to pay 150 for who you think you are, but that's not what I want to pay. I'm only going to pay 50. Now go back in there and round them numbers up again and find me something for $50 because it can happen. It, 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 you can do that. Why? Because I'm with different carriers. Right. And we'll just go through different carriers and try to find the best one for that product. So it's almost like they're, are they like shopping around like the price points and the comparisons almost to get the best mm -hmm. value? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm with different carriers because okay. I always feel like one company is not, to me, it's not going to be the, that one company is not going to be able to service every single person. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then just what is the typical financial range that just on average what, that it would run from? It just depends on the age. That's what okay. you think you look at, the age and your medical information, but mainly your age. I would say, and I'm once again, I'm just going to base it on me. For, like, say, a $100,000 30-year term policy, that right there may be anywhere from $40 to $50 a month. No, okay. just a traditional 30-year term, say, between $40 to $50, something like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, so that way you can see, okay, if you're 30, it's going to be less. And if you are 50 and above, it's going to be a little, a little bit, bit more. more. Okay, that mm -hmm. makes sense. So the younger you are, as long as you're healthy, it's going to probably be a little bit cheaper, but it may run out. Because <laughs> you said that the part. longest term was like 40 years. Well, so. At 40, but you can't, like, I don't qualify. I really did. When I saw it, I'm like, oh, let me see what I can get. They was like, no, ma'am. I was like, okay. I was like, never mind. My little, that little red thing came up and was like, it gave me the age that I had to be in order to get it. So it's like, I think you, as long as you're under, I want to say 35, you can get up to the 40 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why I tell people, don't get excited. Don't call your age and don't be calling them talking about, oh, I'm 50 years old. Give me a 40 year term. I think not. <laughs> I, I think not. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. So you talked a little bit about this earlier, but this is one of the main reasons we're doing this topic tonight is one of the things that we've seen a lot of is people not having or not being able to, you know, afford burial costs when emergent, uh, unexpected death occurs in the family or even when someone dies from old age. So why would you say GoFundMe is not the best idea to cover funeral costs? And what, what would you suggest instead? Well, to me, the reason, there's two reasons. Number one, GoFundMe itself is going to take a portion of that money for their fee. So okay. that's number one. It's, I don't even know who GoFundMe is as far as who created it, who's getting the money. So I don't want to give you however much of your, the fee. The more money you have in that account, the more they're going to take. That's number one. And then number two. Now, I'm not sitting up here saying this is the case with everybody. But I'm just saying, this is some of the things that I have seen and I have heard and witnessed. When a person passes away and they have no coverage and they are in a family where the family itself, if you have your own bills, you have your own family, you have your own responsibilities. Sometimes people don't have an additional $50 here and there, $100 or $1,000. So now you got to go out here and put this out here. You got to go out here and beg and borrow for people to come and, and, and donate money. And we're living in the times where, good Lord, gas prices right about now, you almost got to donate a whole kidney and go <laughs> to plasma just to be able to go out there and have that money to be able to fill up your tank. Look at the grocery stores. Look at the aisles. Everything is going. <laughs> now, to live in the hood, you got to pay $2,000 to live in a little old small shack now. Right. So all of this is going on. So people now have to work two and three jobs just to maintain. You pass away, don't have coverage. Now you asking all these people to help have to help you. That's a burden, especially when people don't have it. And so the thing is, to me, it's like, instead of having your family out here in that situation, especially if you have the disposable income, because I always tell people all the time, let me put the disclaimer out here. I'm not talking about the people who genuinely cannot afford insurance because either they don't have any income or they have very little income and they just cannot afford an additional bill. Right. The people that, that get on my nerves are the ones who have the disposable income and will not take care of their business. They will not have right. their business. But the ones who are in that situation a lot of times, sometimes their family members are the ones that don't have the extra. You don't know what somebody else has. You can't be over here counting anybody else's coins. 
So that's why I tell people, instead of putting your family and your friends in that situation where they got to beg and borrow and they got to prolong your funeral, so you die on, fe on February the 1st, they can't bury you to March 1st. You've been somewhere else in the morgue on dry ice looking a hot. Whenever it's time for them to roll you out there, they have an open casket. Somebody like me, that's going to tear my nerves up. Because now I'm like, you look like this when you was alive. And you look like something off a thriller when you die. Because <laughs> you've been back there in that, on that dry ice for a whole month deteriorating. Why? Because you didn't take care of your responsibilities. You did not handle your business. And that's why I say this GoFundMe just gets on my nerves. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Okay. How does having a life insurance policy help you build generational wealth? Number one is because the fact that I would say, especially when it comes to Black people, when it comes to Black people, we were always taught that life insurance was for burial. Life insurance was to put you away. That's right. what the old folks used to say. I got to put me away nice. We were not told about, or at the time before 1964, we were not allowed to get the term policies. We were only allowed to get these little small $10,000 policies. So there was no way to generate any kind of wealth or create any kind of wealth. It was just there to say, hey, this is enough to bury. After 1964, that's when the Civil Rights Act came about and they put all those amendments in there. Guess what came up under that amendment? Life insurance companies. But we were not told that. Nobody educated us on that. So therefore, we were still going out here getting these little small whole life policies. When... You know, white people were going out here getting these big term policies. And see what they did, they stacked the policies. So they would say, I'm going to get a policy here. 10 years later, I'm going to get another policy. 10 years later, I'm going to get another policy. They kept going until they could no longer qualify. But guess what happened? Even when they passed away, one or two of those policies were still on the book someplace. Right. So now there's a $100,000, $200,000, $300,000, a million dollars whatever the amount is that's being passed on to that next generation. So normally a husband and a wife, husband passed, the wife gets it. Wife passed, the children get it. Children get it, then the grandchildren get it. They just knew how to take a certain portion of that, live off a little bit of it and take the rest and put it back someplace, whether in a bank, right. credit union, investment accounts, real estate, whatever. So that's how they were able to generate and create wealth. So what I teach people, especially our people, is we can do the same. So even if you were to go out here and get a $250,000 policy, I always tell people life insurance isn't for the one that dies, it's for the one that lives. So if it's a situation where you have a $250,000 policy and you pass away during that time frame, that term that you're within, now guess what? If you know you leave it up to your you leave it to your spouse, now they have that. And right. if they fight by that money, now they can say, I'm going to live off a little bit. I'm going to put the rest away. I'm going to save it. I'm going to invest it. I'm going to put it into some real estate. All these different opportunities that they have out here. And once again, it's about being disciplined and knowing what you're supposed to do and how to do that with your money. So if you keep doing that, then guess what? Now your child was going to have the opportunity to do the same. Their child will have the opportunity to do the same. We can bring ourselves out of poverty. I always tell everybody, and I learned this from my grandmother, it's nobody's job to save you, but you just said a mouthful. I, I came from the hood, okay? Do I live in the hood now? No, but I'm going to always be a product of the hood. However, I remember what my grandmother said, ain't nobody, this is her words, ain't nobody coming over here <laughs> to save your blankety blank, but you, you need to save yourself and you need to figure out how you're going to get on up out of here. True. But what I made sure of is that when I, the insurance that I have, if I pass away within these next 30 years, my son will never have to understand mm -hmm. the life that I had to come through because I'm setting him up for generational wealth. Right. Like I told him, now don't be out here. I don't know. You know how I talk. No, <laughs> you know what I normally would say, but I'm like, I don't want you on that. So no, I don't want you going out here buying no big old car with no big old rims and spray right. paint my face on the side of it with R.I.P. Mama on the back of it. No, I don't want you to do that. Mourn me and remember me, but go out there and remember, I, I helped to create this legacy for right. you. So that's how we can generate 
and generate wealth and create wealth is through the power of life insurance, knowing how much to have, knowing how much you can afford. Once again, you don't have to start out with getting everything all at one time. Get your small policy and add on to your coverage as time goes on. When you see you have a little bit of extra and you say, you know what, I got extra $50. Let me see what I can invest in. You know what? I think I may want to get another life insurance policy. Stack them. That way term, once again, you got to know how to work it. So with term, if you get a term when you're 25, get another one when you're 30, get another one when you're 35, get another one when you're 40, get another one when you're 50, get creative with it. Right. But that way you have all this coverage across the board. So therefore, when you pass away, something is still going to be in place and still get your little whole life to say, this whole life is still going to be for my final expense. But all of this, I want this to go towards my family or my organization, my company, whatever, because I want this to be able to be the tool that's going to create and start that thing called wealth. And I think the other caveat for this is if you're working, like I know for myself, like I work for the states, so we have a lot of different options to add on different policies like accidental death policies different term policies or you can increase the amount you like you may have to answer a questionnaire after a certain point but they give you certain things when you are still working you would want to take advantage of those policies that are offered through your job because a lot of times I know with my job they offer some that are free for costs and then other ones that are additional costs but it's really not that expensive it's twelve dollars a month mm -hmm. yeah. and I always tell people all the time if they offer it through your job take it because it's going to be a lot less expensive because you're under a group plan mm -hmm. but i always tell people this when you take it and sign it up i always ask can you port it port it just means take with you okay you port the policy in the event that you quit your job get fired from the job get laid or whatever the case may be can it be taken with you and if they say that it can, now just realize that you're going to pay a lot more for it because okay. that's why you're paying individual rates and not group rates. But at least you know that you don't have to worry about losing your coverage. But I also always tell people, make sure you have something on your own. Always. Okay. It doesn't necessarily have to be as much as what you're getting through your job. But just in case that job says, no, we're not going to let you take that. Because see, by law, all they have to do is offer you COBRA. Okay. They don't, oh, they don't have to offer you the life insurance. So if there's a company that says, no, we don't allow you to port it. When you leave here, it's gone. At least that way, if you have something in place while you're still at that job, you're not out here trying to hunt to try to find coverage. Like, oh my God, I just lost my job or right. left my job. And now I got to try to go find something else. If you've been paying that the whole entire time you've had the job, then now you've got to make sure that you keep that particular policy or policies up. So I would tell people always, like I said, you don't have to have the same amount. If your job is giving you 500000 in coverage, that does not mean you would need to go over here and try to match it with your own. Right. <laughs> that's going to be more expensive. Yeah. But just try to find something that you can say, you know what, I'm comfortable with paying this amount. I want to make sure I have my own coverage because when you get an individual plan, you are the owner and the insured. When you're with a job, you're the insured, but the, your job is the owner of that coverage. Okay, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's all my formal questions around insurance. Is there anything else you want to add before I get into like our last two questions? No, I think I'm, I think I'm straight. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So what advice would you give to your younger self? Oh my goodness. Well, let's see. First of all, I'll probably just slap my younger self so silly for all of the dumb mess that I got into. <laughs> if I could go back, I would not have been out here spending money like I was spending it. Like, I was out here going crazy in my younger years. You couldn't tell me I was a Queen Latifah back whenever I was in high school. I always had to have my hair done, had to have them big old earrings, all the latest styles. Like I said, I'm telling my age, Cross color, Fubu, <laughs> Nike, the Reebok Classics, anything that came out, I had to go have. It. So when I got paid, I didn't listen to my mother. I was that one that defied everything my mother told me back <laughs> in the day. I defied everything. She's the one that said, You need to save, you need to save. I'm like, I'm not going to save right now because I got to look cute, I got to look good, and I got to keep up with the, the, the style. Like, I want to be in style, you know. <laughs> 
So I just spent all my money just recklessly. And then whenever I finally got to the point where I'm like, well, I want to save by that time I'm married, I got a child. I can't say I don't want to. And I right. know my mother brought up this big pile of clothes. I guess she had just been waiting all these years. I'm like, where's my old clothes going? She kept all them clothes. When I tell you she brought up them cross color jeans, I looked, it looked like Skittles laying out on the floor. I was like, that green, purple, blue, orange, red, yellow, pink. I was like, what was I thinking? And so she was like, there you go. There, there's all your savings right there. When you ask me about, can you borrow some money? No, I'm, I want you to ask this pile right here. Can you borrow some money? Because that's <laughs> your money went. Lesson learned the hard way. That part. So if I knew back then what I knew now, I would have saved every single dime I had. I would have went and went to the Goodwill and went and bought my clothes from over there and wouldn't have cared that everybody was laughing. Because one thing I learned is that, you know what, poor is loud and wealth is quiet. And all them kids back in the day that we all picked on that came to school looking like they were rolled hard and hung up wet, they was going home to mansions. They was going home to big old houses or whatever. They pulling up in a 1919 get out and push mobile, but at home, <laughs> they got whatever the latest name, the kind of car that it is and pay cash for. Right. Like I said, I would, if, when I made $80, I would have said, I'm going I'm to save 75 and it's five. I'm going to live off of it for the week. Back then, everything was cheap. So I'm like, I'm going to take my $5. No, I did all, I did the rest. Give me $80. Okay, I saved $5 and I spent the $75. <laughs> $5, three days laid out my savings and said, I'll save again next week. Crazy. God, I was crazy. So that's what I do. And I tell people all the time, people I, say, I want to be rich. I want to be rich. I'm like, no, nah, you want to be wealthy because wealth is assets. Rich is only cash. And that's that money. That cash money is going to go fast. I want to circle back to a question I didn't, I meant to ask earlier before we get to our last one. Most people, a lot of insurance agents, they will do a free consultation with you without, you know, you having to pay any fee up front. This is just so people know. Excuse me, but. Don't get scammed. No, hold on, hold on. Back up, back up. <laughs> Now, I know back when I got started, we were pretty much told we couldn't do that. So I never charge a fee. I don't care how long somebody want to talk to me. You can talk to me as long as I got the time. If you got 20 minutes, if you say, I would say my seasoned folk, the ones that's like over 60. So I make right. sure I got about four hours for them because you don't rush the season. My mother's 72. I don't rush my mother. I'm not going to rush anybody else. You know, right. but, And you ain't going to rush my mom. If I feel like you rush it, now you got to come deal with me. But the whole thing is that if you take 20 minutes, two hours, two days, agents are not supposed to be out here charging a fee. And I, if there are agents out here charging a fee and they listen to this, I know they probably going to hate me. I don't care. But I'm like, but no, you're not supposed to be doing that. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Mm -mm. And if they are doing it, call the Department of Insurance on them. Let me know who it is. I'll call Bring the other Shannon B out of me. I'm trying to be professional on him. You're doing a good job, Shannon. You're doing a good job. I tell everybody, I said, she is hilarious. <laughs> he was going to have a good talk. But I put my nerves up talking about somebody agent out here charging somebody. They know they wrong. Yeah, I mean, because people, unfortunately, but people, they, some people don't know any better. So it's like, no, nah, you don't want to get, you know, taken advantage of. Like, that's mm -hmm. illegal. Because see, the whole thing is you get a commission. When you're an insurance right. agent, you get a commission. So what does that look like? If you're going to get something from me, I don't charge you $50 or $100 and I turn around and get paid from the company. That's double dipping. So I'm like, no. So that's why I said, not unless that's something new. Now, that's something new these new school agents are doing. Okay, I stand corrected. I know I don't. Okay. I don't do that. I'm not going to do it because I want to sleep good. At I'm not know, that's going right. to over going to get something I know that I was trained not to do. Right. Now, all right. My last question is, what are the main takeaways that you would like to leave with our audience as we wrap up? I just want people just to understand that insurance is very important. It's, it could be a game changer, a life changer. Um, it could be put in place, even if you get something small, start out small. 
at least that way, even if you're not able to go out here and say, I'm going to leave my family a million dollars, at least you're not leaving them in debt. Make sure that you go out here if you're going to get an agent. So I tell everybody all the time, I know I'm not for everybody and I'm okay with that. I am a okay with that. <laughs> but go find you somebody that you can go talk to. If you have an agent already, go back and talk to them. Make sure you have enough coverage. Make sure you understand your coverage. Don't sit there and go into something and you don't even know exactly what it is that you have. Stop going right here and letting these agents make you go right here looking like Bambi in the headlights for somebody to come and ask you what kind of coverage you have. Well, I don't know. <laughs> or why, well, what kind of questions you have? They just told me this is what I needed. And you believe them? Right. Yeah, why? I'm like, no, make that agent work for every single dime they're going to make. Yeah, it's their, it's their job to answer your questions. Exactly. Call them. And be like, look, I got a question. Whatever they did to, uh, to get you as a client, they need to do the exact same thing and put that exact same energy into making sure that you are good throughout the process. I know one thing for me, if you call me at, you know, one o'clock and you say, hey, Shannon, I got a question. I need about an hour of your time. I'm like, look, I'm busy <laughs> right now, but give me to about six o'clock and you can have me for the rest of the evening. I don't care if I signed you up last month, if I signed you up 10 years, <laughs> that's what I do. So I always say, find somebody that's going to make sure that they're going to help you. They're going to be there to walk you through the process. So therefore, you know exactly what you're getting and you know exactly what you can tell your beneficiary. Okay. So I always tell people, make sure you under, get an understanding for what it is you have and what you're getting. And just don't let anybody just put you in anything. Stop doing that. Ask questions. Make them work. Make them sweat. I tell people all the time, I may not know the answer, but let's hold on to one quick. Let's call this company. If it's after hours, let me try to find another agent. You know what? I can't find nobody. We're going to call each other tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm putting it on my calendar. We're going to call this company. We're going to find out together. Right. So that's why I tell people, understand what you have. That's my biggest takeaway. Understand, understand what, you, what you have. Make sure that you have enough or what have you. And make sure you get something. A little bit of something's been a whole lot of nothing. Because this whole lot of nothing is equaling up to these GoFundMe accounts. And guess who ain't going to go? <laughs> This one right here. No, ma'am. No, sir. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to come and just sit at the back of your service and just be sitting there with my little toe up face. Ain't this a hot mess? <laughs> with my GoFundMe, it's not life insurance t-shirt on. Right. Yeah. Make all of them mad. Then I'm going to go ahead and get me something to eat the fellowship. All of them go home. I know. That's right. I'm going to open it up at this point for any questions that you may have for Shannon. I'm Shannon, while I'm seeing if there's any questions, if you want to go ahead and do your plug on how people can contact you, go ahead and drop your information. Okay. I'm old school. You can call me if you want via phone. My number is 336-486-9151. I'm old school when it comes down to the email. You can reach me at swbrooks31 at yahoo.com. I'm also on Facebook under my name, Shannon Brooks in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I will put out here the memo that my page is not saved. So <laughs> if you creep on my page and you see some things, you might be like, oh my, yeah, that's me. Shannon's real. She keeps it 100. Yeah, like, I do. I believe and it. she spares no one's emotions. I surely do not. So I always tell the saints, my page ain't saved. So govern yourself accordingly. <laughs> Some people will come on that Monday and then by that Friday, they back into my people you may know. I'm like, oh, I was a little bit too much for you. Right. That's okay. Thank you That's for coming. Right. Yes. And then I'm on LinkedIn. I'm a little bit better, a little bit more put together on LinkedIn. And once again, I guess you just look under Shannon Brooks, Winston-Salem, I guess. I don't know how to mm -hmm. really do that. But over there, I'm put together. That's my boring page. Like I got sense over there. I talk like Shannon Brooks, like I'm in, you know, the board robe over there. Boring. Professional. <laughs> yeah, that part. And I'm on Instagram, but I don't really go over there. I, I, I think my, what's my name over there? SW Brooks 37. That's a boring page. I don't really do that much over there, but on Facebook is where you find me. Yeah. So you can friend Shannon on Facebook, text her or email her. And if you didn't catch that, shoot me a message and I'm happy to connect you with her directly. So Shannon, thank you so much for taking your time this evening to come and just talk to us and share your knowledge and expertise, because I feel like it's really important for us to have these conversations, especially with our community, because sometimes people just don't know that certain things are attainable for them. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate your time. And is there anything else you want to leave us with before we wrap this up? 
Ooh, like I said, I tell everybody, just remember, GoFundMe is not life insurance, people. Remember that and let's, you know, stop this foolishness. Let's stop going out here, living the dream and dying a nightmare. If you can spend a hundred, shit, Jordans is like 250 and don't let it be a good class. But if you can buy some Jordans, you can take the time to purchase some life insurance. So just make sure that you have your priorities together because you know, material things, they lose value the minute you purchase it and walk out of the door with it. Take the time to invest in your future, invest in your family's future, and just make sure that you're covered and that, you know, if something happened to you tomorrow, that you wouldn't be putting your family in a hard place. And I know I'm, sometimes I may be preaching to deaf ears, but again, we just, we, the part of these spark sessions is just to, you know, to educate people on you know, what's out there and just making sure that people have awareness of certain topics and issues. Shannon, thank you so much for your um, time this evening. Um, this is really good Very information. Welcome. I will let you know once the video is up and edited. So thank you again. I don't think we have any questions. If you guys got any insurance questions, if you're watching the replay, feel free to drop them in the comments and we'll get those answered for you. Shannon, I hope you have a great evening. And thank you again. You're very welcome. All right, take care.